Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit down, relax, put your feet up, and listen as we have a calm conversation that'll hopefully help you drift off or at least take your mind somewhere else. Thank you for listening to the Insomnia Project. I am your host, Marco Timpano. Thank you for all the recent reviews, the five star reviews we have received. And if you haven't given us a review yet and you're enjoying our podcast, please give us a five-star review on whatever application you listen on. Now, let's get to our program. Um, I have uh, the pleasure of having the daughter of a former guest who happens to be my cousin, Danny. His daughter, my cousin, Jennifer Campolucci, is here on the Insomnia Project. Welcome, Jennifer. Hi, everyone. Jennifer, you have a... um, You've always been very fashionable and you work in fashion. What got you into fashion? Let's talk about fashion. Um, I think it was when I was younger. I just, I guess, watching a lot of pop culture and living in a small, small city, Barrie, if anyone knows that area, um, not a lot going on. So watching just a lot of TV and a lot of movies, I think that's what really just got me into fashion. Um, And then I knew as soon as I was done high school, I'm like, I got to get out of this city. I want to be in the big city. So I ended up going to school for fashion there. Okay. And so what do you do now as par- as as your fashion career continues to take off? Yes. So now I've had this job for the last year and um, it's something that I wanted for the last, I would say, eight years. And I feel like I finally made it. Fantastic. So, Congratulations. Um, thank you. So I'm working as a field visual merchandising manager for Canada, which is super exciting. And what exactly does a field supervision manager do? Yeah, so I have 10 stores in Canada, and basically it's just making sure that the store looks presentable. So making sure the mannequins look good, making sure that um, all the fixtures, the walls look good, basically making sure that when a customer comes in, they want to shop and they want to buy. So what's important for a customer, in your opinion, when they enter a a store that deals with fashion, Mm -hmm. what do you want to present them with right off the top? So I think a big thing is just looking at patterns and trends and seeing what customers are purchasing. So if you're noticing, I mean, uh, my company, we're a big leather brand. So if there's a certain style that's selling or maybe a style that isn't selling, that's a piece that you want to place in an area that is a high traffic area that customers are going to walk around. So whether it's on a mannequin, whether it's on a face cell, it's just a really important area and it's not hiding. You also want to look at different um, concepts. So do customers, you know, where's the dressy customer? Where's the more casual customer? So you want to have different areas in the store where customers can find the pieces they're exactly looking for depending on what they're doing for that event or everyday life. So are you saying you section off the store into like mini areas addressing certain types of customers that frequent your brand? Exactly. Okay. All right. So veering from that, what's an essential fashion piece people should have in their wardrobe would you recommend okay um i would say for women i mean it's always been that little black dress okay you're always going to need that but i think also just looking at my company and what you would need stable would be a leather jacket okay now unfortunately we don't have vegan options um we do have some vegan skirts which is great what's vegan Um, leather made of i'm not sure actually um just because we obviously don't really have vegan um options okay yeah um but I'm sure they make it from different, a bunch of different fabrics. Right. But for us, we um, either do cow, we do lamb, we do goat. So goat would be the toughest. It's uh, a lot of our suede is made from goat or our shoes. Okay. Whereas um, our really soft leathers, those would be lamb. So I they're see. really, really soft. Other than leather, what is your favorite fabric? My favorite fabric is probably chiffon. Oh, super really? Because flowy and just like a little bit see-through. So I really love chiffon. Okay, so yeah. leather jacket for both men and women, mm-hmm. a little black dress yeah. essential for a woman's wardrobe. Yeah. What about for a man's wardrobe? Hmm, for a man's wardrobe, um, I would say, I mean, we're really big with our denim. Okay. So you have to have a really, really good piece of denim. And we have different styles too. Um, but I mean, just having something like Levi's. I mean, right, sure. Great, great, great brand. And a black t-shirt or a white t-shirt. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's so much easier to style men than women. Because for it? men, it's just, 
you guys just wear a t-shirt, sure. pants, that's it. So when I'm merchandising the store, it's so much easier. Whereas women, we have we have skirts, we have dresses, we have so many more pieces than men. So, yeah. <laughs> and, okay, what is something that's key in your wardrobe that you can take from, say, casual to a more dressy? Okay. What's a versatile piece I, that not necessarily is the brand you work with, yeah. but that's something in your closet? I would say for me, and I would say in fashion, the biggest thing right now is denim. Because okay. denim, you can dress it up with heels or you can wear dress it down with sneakers. You can dress it up with a crop top and, like I said, with the sneakers or without or with heels. So it's, it's, I find that denim right now, that's the biggest thing right now. Okay. So how important is it to get your denim mm-hmm. jeans, let's say yeah. tailored once you've Ooh. purchased them? Cause someone's told me that, yeah. you know, once you get jeans, you should really have it tailored to your body type or your, your height and okay. stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. Um, I would say for sure the height is a big thing, especially cause I'm so short, Okay, but it's kind of cool now to have them a bit longer too. Oh, so the style right now is to yeah, have them a bit so longer. Yeah, you can have you it. You can longer. get away with it. Yes, you can get away with it. Um, you know, j- denim right now is very wide leg too, so you can totally get away with it being long and getting a little bit distressed at the bottom. I see. I love that look. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Okay, how do you follow trends? What do you do to follow trends? Um, I mean, I would say Instagram is probably the biggest thing right oh, now. Oh, really? Yeah, like I follow a lot of different models and a lot of different. Um, I don't know, just uh, pages on Instagram and you see a lot of recurring pieces and then that's when you're like, oh, okay, maybe I do like this piece because you keep seeing it over and over again. Um, So yeah, I would say for sure Instagram is the biggest thing. I see. Yeah, for everyone. And how does one pick the right color for them? Um, Definitely based on skin tone. Um, I mean, if you're really pale, you don't want to go for a very neutral color. You don't want to go for like a nude or for a yellow. But if you're a bit darker, that's when you can wear those colors because they're going to pop. I see. Yeah. So I I don't know. For me, it really varies. I'll sometimes, you know, I'll wear all black or sometimes I'll I'll wear bright colors. Um, For me, I don't think there's a color I can really not wear. Fair (laughs) enough. I like all colors. Sure, sure. But I like the more neutral or darker colors, to be honest. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. And when you're sourcing pieces for yourself, when you shop, okay, what's important to you? Like, is it the mm. fabric? Is the cost? Is it the feel? Is it the fit? Is it, will this trend go out of style soon? Like, what are the things that are key for you? I would say the fit of it. Um, but it also depends because, you know, I'll like it very tight, but I'll also like it loose. It just depends on how I'm feeling. I think also, if, is it versatile? Can I dress it up or can I dress it down? Um, and then as well, I mean, cost is obviously always a big thing. Sure. Um, so I'll definitely look into that. So... I really like online shopping. Like that's really big for me. And you can find a lot of pieces that are super affordable. Mm-hmm. So something like, for example, Misguided. Um, I think it's a UK brand, right? The right. only thing that's not so great about it are the duty fees. But sure, it is what it is. Okay. Um, Unless you're living in the UK, which we have a lot of listeners who are based okay. in the UK. Okay, so you guys are lucky. So yes. <laughs> you guys are very, very lucky. So us in Canada, I mean, I'll buy a bunch of things. It'll be a hundred bucks. Which is not bad. Right. And then, you know, $50 duty fee. So I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, that's a bit much. Okay. But, You're, you know, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> well, okay. So I'm. you've always impressed me because you've always had a key piece in mm-hmm. your wardrobe that makes a statement. So, mm-hmm. for example, if I look at you right now, yeah. I notice that your glasses okay. are Valentino. Yes. Right? <laughs> but the rest can be very casual and yes. not a brand. But yes. you have one brand that sort of sticks out yes. in your wardrobe. And you had a Moschino belt, I remember, yes. years ago that you yes. bought. That you bought, um, what would you call it? Not used was, uh, uh, on consignment or something? Yeah, it was, um, they source high-end brands. Mm-hmm. And because at the time we didn't have Moschino in Canada, right. right? So they were sourcing them somehow from the U.S. And it would be like a, a boutique. Okay. So they would have a bunch of different brands. Okay. And yeah. so you would have this sort of, I don't know if it's called a statement piece, mm-hmm. but you would have this one high-end yes. brand mixed in with other pieces that maybe weren't so high end exactly yeah that's something i like to do i mean of course we all love high-end brands um we can't all afford it sure um so yeah i do like to have sometimes that one piece that'll stand out um i don't wear my glasses all the time but you know with glasses i do like to get something higher end because i wear them a lot um so that for me makes sense whereas shoes high-end shoes if you wear them all the time they're going to get destroyed right you're going to have to get a new piece so 
high-end shoes I do stay away from. I see. That's yeah. very fascinating. So something yeah. like glasses that are frequently worn but mm-hmm. you take better care of yes. or that don't receive the same sort of, um, you know, wear and tear mm-hmm. as yeah. shoes is where you're going to invest your money. Likewise with the belt versus, exactly. say, a, I don't know, baseball cap. Yes, I exactly. Know. Yeah. Not that I know of high-end baseball <laughs> caps. But, okay, so... <laughs> Or bucket hats. Or bucket hats. We were talking about bucket hats. So Jennifer is going to try to get me this really high-end bucket hat um, because they're really in style. They're really in right now, and I think you can suit it. Yeah, we, and can. there was a, quite a bit of debate whether or not I'm too old or I will suit a bucket hat. And thankfully, Jennifer said, I think you can get away with it. Mm-hmm. And because she's my personal <laughs> ca- connection to fashion, <laughs> I trust her. Let's talk about designers. Okay. So I want to, I'm going to ask you about designers that you like. Okay. In and they could be designers that people aren't yet aware of mm-hmm. in Canada, okay. in the UK, okay, and in the US, where I have a lot of listeners. I have okay. listeners outside of those areas too. Okay. But let's start there. Okay. So, who is a designer that you like yeah. from the United States? And hello to all our dear listeners in the US. Oh. Oh, my God. I am not the best with this. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm not the best with, like, where they're exactly from. Okay. Did you watch the Halston uh, movie that they made on Halston? No. Oh, it's I fascinating. Didn't watch you that. should watch it. It's no, great. No, yeah. I did not watch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am, um, honestly, I, I, I love high end brands, but I don't look too, too much into them. I think okay. when they have their fashion shows, that's when I, I, I really see. look. So, for example, like Dolce and Gabbana. There. Who I served in New York when I was in, uh, yeah, when I was a waiter in New York, I served Dolce. I didn't know yeah, that. I did. I don't, I oh, guess wow. I didn't tell how, you. How were they? Oh, they were horrible. I thought they that. were absolutely horrible. I Probably the worst people I've ever served. I, I haven't heard the best things about them. Oh, so. they're, they're just, they're just as wonderful as their fashion is. I think they're Italian, aren't they? Yeah, they're yeah. Italian, yeah. Uh, as wonderful and glorious and beautiful their, mm-hmm. their fashion is. Yeah. They, as people, are the exact opposite. Oh, They're horrible oh, and terrible no. and trashy and just the worst. Okay. That was my experience. I don't know. Maybe okay. someone else's ex- experience is, maybe. is is better. I mean, I would love to meet Donatella Versace oh. because I think she is... She's fabulous. Amazing. Like She's she, fabulous. She just seems cool and crazy and yes. lovely and all of the things you could imagine. She just seems so much fun and I've seen her in photos in like the late 90s, early 2000s partying and she just looks like so much fun. Yeah. Yes. But there is actually a new mo- fashion movie I want to watch with Lady Gaga and she starring House of Gucci, right? House of Gucci, yeah, and Adam Driver. So that I really, really want to watch because I actually didn't know the backstory of it. I see. And then I looked into it and I'm like, this story sounds it's crazy. But do you like the Gucci brand. I do like the Gucci brand. What's your favorite brands besides the one you work for? Okay. So we'll take that out of the equation. Okay. Okay. Um, I definitely love YSL. Um, I would say YSL and Gucci are the ones are you, I, are your I, favorite. Okay. I really do like. Why is that? Yes. YSL, you Saint Laurent? Is that what it stands yeah, for? Yeah, okay. Laurent. Look how smart I am. Look at you. I know. Maybe you do know some stuff about fashion. <laughs> I don't know. I think I've just been around the block enough. <laughs> um, you know what? For one, I think I just, I love the aesthetic of it. And the, it's very um, simple and classic. Um, and especially when I look at their handbags, it's just like structured and they're just, Simple Which brand classic. are we talking about? YSL. Okay. And even the aesthetic of when the When you store. say structured, what does that mean? Um, for structure, it's just very, how would I say it? It's very square. <laughs> I'm trying to think about it. It's not something that's like floppy. It's very just like. So it has like um, bold lines. So it's not circular, but it's more. Yeah. Um, it's. Architectural. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Bold. It's not. It's not soft. It it stands out. It stands out. Okay. It stands out. Yeah. Um, but because people use that term, and I've always wondered what exactly that means. <laughs> like for example, like your bag. It's very structured. Okay. Does that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> and for those of you who cannot see my bag right now, it is a rectangular bag that has really sharp corners to it. Let's yes. say. Okay. <laughs> Great. Got it. And uh, their pieces stand out with just like, you know, the YSL logo or the little chain. And it's just like gold. And it just, I mean, they have silver too, but sure. it just like really stands out. Okay. So it's simple, but classic. So mm-hmm. I think that's why I really love YSL. And I think also just you walk into one of their stores and it's marble everywhere. Okay. Um, and there are fixtures where 
the product hangs from it hangs from the ceiling which is really cool and it's just on like units of one so you know how if you go into a forever 21 sure and there's a t-shirt you like and there's 20 different units of it right. with a bunch of you know small to large or extra large but you go into the store they have one size one unit on display and that's it so it's just very boutique and um i love seeing that okay yeah i think that looks so nice do you have any YSL pieces? No. Okay. Not yet. All right. So for anyone who is a big fan of Jennifer, you know what you can get her. Her birthday's <laughs> coming up. A YSL. I'll talk, I'll talk to your father, who coincidentally talked about his work in yep. the sewage area, uh, quite the opposite of <laughs> yes. um, fashion. But where some people might find sewage fascinating, they might not find fashion so fascinating. And likewise, so if you're at this point fascinated by this episode, I refer you to the episode I did with Danny on sewage, and perhaps that one will uh, bring you to a more relaxed state. All right. I want to talk about another love of yours, okay. which is cats. Yes. So tell me about your cats, of which you have many. Now, just to let everyone know, I am not a crazy cat lady. Yet. <laughs> Yet. It is slowly happening. Okay. okay. So I have three Maine Coons. So if you don't know what a Maine Coon is. I don't, actually. They are the largest domestic breed. Oh, okay. So the boys can weigh up to 25 pounds. Wow, that's large. Yes. So they are very long cats. Um, they're heavy, but I would just say that I've noticed with my cats, they're very, very long. And um, they're very furry. And also what's very distinct with them, they have the pointy ears, so they look like lynxes. I see. And they have, they call it ear tufts. So at the ends of their ears, they have these little hairs that come out where it looks really pointy. And a lynx is a wild cat found yes. in Canada for people who don't, aren't yes. familiar with that. Yes, but no relation. No relation. It's it's in the same cat world, but different cat families. Exactly. We're talking domesticated cats here. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they're also, they're from Maine. Well, oh, they're from Maine, they're from, actually from New Maine. England. Okay. Yeah, and um, they were um, hunter cats, so they would just be outside. I think trying to catch like the mice or whatever. Sure, so, any little small rodent, I bet, exactly. or birds yep. or whatnot. Sure. Yeah. So they would, I guess, watch over. Mm -hmm. um, also, with Maine Coons, they are known as the dogs of the cat world. Oh. Yes. So they, um, I mean, with my cats, for example, they follow me around everywhere I go. So they're very friendly, it sounds yes. like. If I go to the bathroom, all three are, all three of them are there with me. Okay. <laughs> okay? If I'm going to bed, all three of them are in the bed. Everywhere I go, they're there. Um, they just want attention and love. Um, so exactly what I read about the breed is exactly what I have, which is I love. Is that why you chose that breed? Because you wanted a more cuddly cat, yes. if you will? So I grew up with dogs. I absolutely adore dogs. Um, and then... Uh, my boyfriend and I, we got uh, a cat um, from my good friend, and unfortunately, he was only with us for nine months, okay. but um, he totally changed our perspective, and he made us fall in love with cats, and then we knew we we're going to get more cats, so we were going to get two, and right. then my boyfriend, you know, there was the girl that was left, and he was like, I feel bad, let's get the girl, and I'm like, I don't know. Three cats is a lot. Sure. A couple of days go by, I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, let's do it. And now we have three. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. And is it easier to have multiple cats versus one? In other words, do they play with themselves when you're not home? Mm -hmm. Are they kind of more self-sufficient because there's more than one, would you say? Yeah, I would say, I mean, with cats, they sleep a lot. Okay. Um, but they like having each other, and that's the reason why we wanted to get more than one, so they could be all together. Sure. Um, but they kind of do their own thing, but as soon as they hear the door open, they run to the door, especially the one, Leo. He's he's a bad one. Okay. Um, but he will run to the door, and he's just so excited to see whoever came home. I see. So yeah. there's Leo, and what are the other two? Leo, Nova, and Luna. So we named them after, like, astrology and the stars oh, and stuff. Oh, that's yeah. lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So they were all born the same time, same litter. Um, oh, so they're brothers and sisters. They're actual brothers and sisters, and they're all different colors. So one is black and white, one is blonde, and one is uh, tortoise shell, so she's multicolored. I see. Yeah. And you can see the significance in size, how the boy, the boys are much bigger than the girl. The girl is so small. I see. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's my love with cats. <laughs> and 
since they are hunter uh, hunter breed, mm-hmm. do you have any problems at home with any sort of? Uh, well, we have a balcony, and when okay. they see the bugs in the window, they go nuts. Okay. So they really want to catch the bugs, and I get a little bit worried if there's a bee or a wasp that if, if I'm out in the balcony with them. Because um, you live in a high-rise downtown. Yes. 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 Um, so they love, yeah, they're they're definitely hunter animals. <laughs> okay. My goodness. I know, right? What a lovely journey into this breed of cat that I didn't know about. Mm-hmm. And I guess you just fell in love with that breed. You didn't, or you did research so, on it. So the previous cat we had, he was very similar to what they are. So he would play fetch. I see. So we, like I said, like a dog, you'd throw the toy, he would run, catch it, he'd bring it back. I see. To throw it again. Um, he would follow me everywhere I go. He'd want to sleep in bed with me. So we just loved that he was like a dog. So then we started researching, you know, what kind of cats maybe he could be because we didn't know what he was. He was mixed. Um, and then we found Maine Coon. And, I mean, I love that they're huge because, okay. like I said, I always love dogs, and I like big dogs. Um, and then they act like dogs, so I'm like, this is the breed for us. And I was unsure, but, you know, my boyfriend was like, let's do it. Let's get them. So I was like, okay, perfect. So, yeah. And there you have it. Yep. Now, is there anything you would recommend to our listeners who might be considering getting this type of cat? You've talked about all the positive qualities of mm-hmm. it. Is there anything that you need to know before you get this cat? I would say... Um, the biggest thing, make sure to have a friend. And I would say that's not just for this breed. That's for any animal you get, mm-hmm. whether it's a cat, a dog, a bird. You know, I know it can cost a bit more, but I think it's important for when we're at work that they have a friend and they're not alone. I see. Um, so I would say that's the, the biggest thing. For my breed, just making sure you have a good amount of space because they are big cats. Okay. Um, and, you know, make sure that you have things that they would like, like a cat tree. My cats are obsessed with cat trees. I've seen people that don't. Wait, wait, a cat tree? A cat tree. Okay. (laughs) So basically, it's a stand, and it can have multiple levels, and they can jump all around. Okay. They love it. Um, Are those the ones that kind of have like a ropey thing tied around them? Sometimes they'll have a rope. For them to scratch or whatever? Yeah, they'll have like a, like made of carpet. Okay. Um, For Maine Coons, they have special ones that are bigger um i suggest getting a very sturdy one um i got mine from wayfair um and it's specific for main coons it's perfect for them how important is it to have the proper fashion for your cats oh so i mean my cats grow out of whatever i buy them very quickly because they're growing um but i think having a really nice collar or a bandana that's really big. Okay. Now, the actual outfits, I, I'm not so sure about. It's not for you. It's not for me. Plus, cats don't like to be dressed up. <laughs> they don't. You put a collar, that's about all you're going to get away yes, with. Yes, and they don't even like that. Right. But my sister, she has a dog. Okay. And his name is Chico. He's a little crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very cute, though. Adorable. He's adorable. And they got him an outfit. Okay. Um, with a... It's blue, button-down, collar, so he's like a blue-collar worker. Oh, I see. Apparently, he looked like a plumber. Okay. (laughs) So, you know, I don't know. I guess dogs like outfits more than cats. I mean, if you're going to have a dog named Chico, (laughs) it's safe to say that that's going to be an awesome name for a plumber dog. I mean, sewage, the grandfather sewage. Yes. It runs in the family. Most definitely. (laughs) Most definitely. Well, Jennifer, we've come to just about the end of our podcast. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful guest. Thank you for having me. Where can people find you if they want to see your fashion trends and see what you're posting? Well, you can follow me on Instagram. You can see all my fashion posts. It's at J Campalucci. So J-C-A-M-P-O-L-U-C-C-I. And we will have that in our show notes in case you don't have a pen handy. So none to worry. Jennifer, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. And for everyone else, I hope you were able to listen and sleep.